Hi, good morning. It's Jim from the Lifestyle Observatory. Guys, we're going to get into where we are right now with the observatory and what equipment we've got out there in the field and what's been going on this year. Before I do, absolutely huge thank you to the people that are supporting uh, us here at the observatory. Without the support, we simply would just be doing what every other YouTube channel is doing, and that is talking about matters. At least we are a little bit proactive here at this observatory and on YouTube here. You know, we've got equipment out in the field and we have got not just in the field, but we're here in the observatory, we've got the TriMag and the magnetosphere sensor. And, you know, we're trying to get a big understanding of what's taking place with our Earth during this uh, rare anomaly that's taking place, you know, the magnetic reversal. So if you remember at the beginning of the year, we had a magnetometer out in California. Uh, for some reason, uh, we lost touch with, I think it was Stephen over there, who was uh, monitoring that magnetometer for us just after that big earthquake that happened in Southern uh, California. Uh, we also had a magnetometer in Kentucky. That one also seems to have gone offline and we haven't heard from Brad for you know a good six months now. But nevertheless, we've got a superstar now in Arizona and for that reason, we are keeping tabs on what's going on with that magnetic anomaly over America that you can see on this uh, picture right now. I want to get a magnetometer into Canada. So if you're in Canada and you're prepared to put one of our magnetometers in your house and just once a month send us the data off the SD card and you know we'll, we'll compile that data and get it up onto the website and if there is anything really um, interesting going on with the intensity in, in that region then we'll let people know but what we do want to say first of all is we know that the intensity over Canada and America right now is dropping off so it'd be interesting to just analyze what's going on with the weather and maybe later on this week we'll be looking at that and trying to go back into the history to see if you know there has been some changes with reflection to the diminishing uh, magnetic intensity over that region right now so we sent a magnetometer out to India, uh, to Ricky, but once it was sent, we never heard from him again. So we don't quite know what happened there. We have tried to get a magnetometer into Russia, and I'm still going to continue to do that because it's important that we get something at least monitoring that intensity region. We are on the cusp of it with the one in Hong Kong, but it'd be nice to get it in that epicenter close to where we know the magnetic North Pole is tracking to. So moving down to M5 and M6, we've got a magnetometer and a muon in the region of M6, Perth, Australia. We've got a magnetometer which is being replaced at the moment because there was a fault on that one again. And we've got one going out to Richard on the Gold Coast. So you should have that any day now. Um, our muon detector on M5 on, in Perth has been there now uh, nearly a week coming up. So it's not going to be long before we get a count over the period of time with muons and this is going to be really interesting because now we are entering another field we are now checking in one of the highest intensity regions on our planet what the muon count is and what why do we want to focus on muons because i'll tell you why up in the upper atmosphere over perth right now there is galactic and um solar uh, cosmic rays coming through the atmosphere interacting with the clouds smashing into each other and creating these um you know byproducts these little particles the atomic you know these tiny little things like muons so if there's a lot of muons on the increase we'll know about it but i will be honest i'm not expecting a great deal over there because this is one of the highest intensity regions on our planet right now and i believe for that reason it is going to protect it from large amounts of muons that isn't um, all cut and dry anyhow. I mean, it might not be the case, but we are going to find out. So over in Brazil, M8 uh, and M7. M7 is a later date. We're going to do that at a later date. Really where I want to get the next magnetometer and muon detector is in the region of M8 in Brazil. Now, uh, one of our superstars at the observatory, who's a regular supporter, uh, Doug, 
um, is in talks with someone. He's just waiting for us, as far as I'm aware, just waiting for him to come back from Brazil. Uh, I know they've been out there talking to the family. I have this week been in touch with someone who also has family out in Brazil. And a little bit later on this afternoon, I'll be talking to them again and seeing if you know they can get in touch with their family and you know just see if they are willing to have one of our muon detectors and also a magnetometer in the m8 region in brazil um when we get that we've got we've got the set basically we've got one in the highest intensity region and we'll have one in the south atlantic anomaly which is the lowest intensity on our planet and i believe the lowest intensity intensity will offer the lowest protection with regards to muons the reason why we want to find out what's going on in these two regions is because we know that the poles are migrating and we know that the magnetosphere is weakening. We also know that we're in a rare time with regards to solar activity, the grand solar minimum. So we know that all these things lead to one thing and that's an increase in cosmic rays coming through to the surface of our planet. You know, it's important uh, because during that magnetic reversal, the magnetosphere will weaken considerably more. And what we want to do, if our theory is correct, in the region of M8 where Brazil is, we will know, uh, hopefully as soon as we get one of our muon detectors out there, if it starts showing high readings, we know that when the magnetosphere collapses, we're going to be um, in a lot of trouble with regards to an, a big influx of cosmic rays globally. Um, there's a few things I want to do um, in the next few videos. I want to show you uh, something that could possibly, during the magnetic reversal, give a little bit of protection. Right? Um, it's it, it's a prototype. I want to show you exactly uh, what it is in that in that video, and show you how it works and the principles behind it. And in theory, it should offer some protection. Um, and let's face it, anything during that period of time coming up in possibly two and a half to seven years is better than nothing at all. So we've got a lot to do, guys. You know, our work is not done. You know, like I say, we are proactive here at this observatory and on this YouTube channel, unlike a lot of others that are just, you know, out there copying and pasting and reading articles, you know, if at the most they're just you know amateur um, researchers and nothing more what we're trying to do here is bring science to the table with measuring equipment and get facts straight that's what we're trying to do and you know I just hope that there are more than just a couple of people that are now prepared to step up to the line and help support this observatory I know you know, it's a pain having to get your credit card out or your debit card out and put the details in there to support us on PayPal or join Patreon. But there's no other way, guys. You know, without the support for this observatory, we simply cannot do what it is we're doing right now. And let's face it, no other government organisation in the field of geomagnetics are revealing the level of information that we pass on to you guys. Our work is not done here. It's far from finished, but we do need support to continue going on forward. It's probably one of the most important anomalies that has ever taken place in human history. And for that reason, it's well worth supporting. I hope you'll agree. Guys, I want to wish you an amazing day. And, you know, I'm going to say what I usually do. You take care. And as always, bye for now.